So if you've watched the show before, you know for a fact that I missed out on a lot of stuff after I stopped watching. It was a big gap. It was like eight years, nine years, seven, one of, one of those years. Math is not my strong suit. Um, but with the WWE Network, not trying to sound like a plug, but I did get it and it is awesome so far. Um, I had the idea. I said, you know what? I'm going to go back. Pick, I'm going to start the year, um, you know, about when I stopped watching, which was 02. And I'm going to start, I'm just going to go through it. I asked people for suggestions um, on Twitter. And then I got some inboxes uh, on here. And then on the Tree of Woe Show Facebook page. It exists. I just don't get on it very much, but I did, you know, to check, check it out. And I got, starting with 2002, I got a lot of, um, you know, I started it. Well, you can see what I started at. What pay per view? Kind of a random one to start at, but that that's what started. So how many? Oh, I got one, two, three, four, five pay per views from 2002 to watch. And it, it's classic pay per view reviews, but it's <laughs> reviews. I wish I could talk. Um, but it's a little different because most people go back and watch these, and it's like they haven't seen it in a while. So they, these, this is my first time seeing all of these. I'm sure as we go on, I will have seen bits and pieces and matches from some of these cards, but never the full thing. Um, so the one that I got told to start with was Judgment Day 2002. Um, so here we are. I'll just post these, like today's a Wednesday, nothing's gonna be posted. Some random Thursdays, Fridays, cause I don't do SmackDown reviews too much. Pretty much any day but Monday, <laughs> these could pop up. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go through, review some old stuff that I've never seen before, and I'm gonna, by God, if it takes me a year and a half, I'm going to get caught up, and you guys might be excited, because I'm going to probably get to relive the times uh, that I didn't get to see, and I will understand why all you guys hate Randy Orton, because I didn't have to live through all this stuff. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Anyways, Judgment Day 2002, just got done watching it. Thank you, WWE Network. The show starts off, Intercontinental Championship match, Eddie Guerrero versus Rob Van Dam. It was good to see Eddie Guerrero again. Him and RVD went at it. Battle of the Frog splashes. Uh, neither of them got to hit it, though. That makes sense because, hey, you know, can't, can't have one be better than the other. So uh, Eddie Guerrero ends up winning. Backslide. Gets on the ropes. He's the dirtiest player in the game. He's the man. Uh, so Eddie Guerrero retained the title. It was a good match. I had a good time watching it. Always a good time to see Eddie Guerrero again. Um, and then... <laughs> The greatest backstage segment of all time. Why? Because I had never seen it before. Devon, all I remember Devon as is, you know, the Dudley boy. He was a preacher, and he was with Stacy Keebler, Vincent Mann, and one other gentleman. And this other gentleman was a big guy, and he was wearing a chain, and he had a thing on it. And I said, that looks a lot like Batista. It ended up being Batista. More on that in a second. And they were praying before the match, uh, the, the Stacey Kubler's match. And then it, this was apparently right after, you know, um, uh, it became WWE. So uh, get the F out thing aired, which I was like, this is what was I doing not watching this back in the day. But then we got Divas match. Trish Stratus versus Stacey Kubler. Holy hot by God. Uh, hotness everywhere. Woo! Um, my man, my my new top top ten favorite wrestlers of all time, Deacon Batista. Oh my god, he was out there with Devon uh, supporting Stacy Keebler, and then Bubba Ray Dudley came out, guns blazing, uh, representing Trish. Trish Stratus ends up getting the win, but then after this match, people start freaking out. Bubba Ray and Devon go at it. Batista gets involved. I'm like. 2014, give me a Divas match that ends up with dudes going through tables and Batista. I'm like, what is going on back in 2002? Um, so I thought that was, I was just like, what is happening right now? Um, and then you go backstage, you see Ric Flair. Woo! That was top five woos I've ever done. Standing there with Arn Anderson and Vince comes in. Apparently back then, uh, Ric Flair was over Raw and Vince was over SmackDown. So they shake hands and, uh, Ric Flair says, unlike Vince, he's going to take out Austin tonight. And I'm like, Stone Cold's here? 
2002? Let's go. Um, and then the next match was Jeff and Matt, the Hardy Boys, taking on Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. I see why people wanted me to watch this card. Batista, Brock Lesnar's on here, and we get to much more later. Great thing. Um, so, yeah, bro, Heyman doesn't really get in there. He gets in there for a second, obviously, and, you know, gets beat up for a second. This match didn't go long. Brock Lesnar was there to kick ass, and Brock Lesnar kicked ass. Hit an F5. Uh, Paul Heyman ends up getting tagged in, gets the pin on Jeff Hardy, and that's what I'm talking about. Um, and then there was a backstage set with Booker T of the NWO. Again, I'm like, what? It's like some, some of these things I'm saying, oh, that's why I stopped watching as a kid. Cause, but then I'm like, it, but now I'm like, what was I thinking stopping watching as a kid? This is good shit. Um, Booker T and some chick, he was trying to go back to the hotel. Yeah, yeah. He got a room key and he was going to hit that up later. The next match, mid-card, Stone Cold Steve Austin was in a handicap match against Ric Flair in the big show. What chance of plenty? I remember the what chant, don't get me wrong, but I do not remember it being this crazy. And it was just, what, woo, what, woo, what, woo. And I'm like, what? This is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Um, LOL, Stone Cold stuns everybody and wins. Ric Flair, big show. And an intruding X-Pac. Get your ass out of there, X-Pac. Come on. Uh, so Stone Cold just chilling in the middle of the card. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense to me. Um, and then, whoo, this match. Hair versus hair. Edge versus Kurt Angle. I always thought I thought Kurt Angle was always bald. I'm learning stuff every day. Um, this, this was a good match. I mean, Edge and Kurt Angle, they were going at it. Like I said, it's Edge and Kurt Angle. What do you expect? Um, Edge, and, and, and Edge ended up getting the win by a roll. There's a lot of referee shenanigans going on, but Edge ends up winning. Kurt Angle had to get that head shape, but he was running around. He left, and they were just running around all show. He was looking for Kurt Angle. So well, did he get his hair shaved? Find out later. Um, and then you got Booker T at the hotel, motel, holiday Inn, but it was a Marriott. Um, and he's in there. He's about to get it on. He turns the lights off, turns the lights back on. It's gold dust chilling there. And then Booker T runs up, full ass, bare ass. And I'm like, okay, full ass, bare ass out here. What's going on? Gold dust doing his thing. And then, hello, awesome match out of nowhere. Chris Jericho versus Triple H in a Hell in a Cell match. This was good stuff. You know, there's blood everywhere. Uh, tables. Not tables. Chairs, sledgehammers, uh, steel steps were getting used. Everything was getting used. They end up breaking out, climbing to the top. Bunch of crap goes down up there. Everyone's bloody. The ref even got messed up in this match. So up on the top, after a while, Triple H ended up hitting a pedigree on the top of the cell and winning, which shocked nobody. Triple H getting a win out of boy Hunter. <laughs> uh, the second to last match of the night was Billy and Chuck, accompanied by Rico. This was my first glimpse of Rico ever and the tag team of Billy and Chuck. They went up against Rikishi and a surprise opponent who ended up to be Rico, who was the stylist of Billy and Chuck. And then Rikishi won, so Rikishi and Rico, the stylist, were the tag champs. Where did this go? Someone please tell me. Because Rico was th that man. He was that dude. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that was just something where I, it was just like... I don't know who any of these guys are, but this is tight, I guess. Um, and then Kurt Angle and Edge, they finally came to a head. They go out there, and Edge finally gets to shave Kurt Angle's head. Proud of you, man. Proud of you. Kurt Angle goes bald, and then they play the theme song. Instead of You Suck, they chanted You're Bald, which is not nice. Don't do that. Um, main event of the night was The Undertaker versus Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Okay? Badass Undertaker, though. Biker Undertaker, not okay with me. No. Not okay with me. I'm not okay with Biker Taker. But he was up against Hulk Hogan. Uh, this match was only like 10 minutes long, actually, for a main event. But, I mean, it's Hulk Hogan and Undertaker, so I guess it makes sense. Um, after a while, uh, the match is getting to the point where it looks like it's going to get over. And Vince McMahon comes out and ends up screwing Hulk Hogan. And then Undertaker gets the win and becomes the... Uh, Undisputed champ, and he just chills there as, you know, Red Devil Big Evil. Um, but, yeah, 
So I had a good time watching this. I'm gonna have a good time watching all of these because I'm pretty sure they're gonna give me the people. You know, the people I asked gave me at least decent ones. Or knowing what I like in wrestling, they're gonna give me stuff that I appreciate. And just watching this, what I've always said, what I remember from the Attitude Era when I watched back in the day when I was little was, everyone talks about how you know they, it was TV 14 and all this stuff. Above everything else, the talent was. The roster was unreal. I look at this card. This card. Guys like Eddie Guerrero and RVD kick off the show. You have, um, let's see, Jeff Hardy is on this card. Brock Lesnar is on this card. Booker T, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ric Flair, Edge, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, Triple H, The Undertaker, Hulk Hogan. Like, what is, like... Could, are you kidding me? The the roster on this this one card only is just unreal. So I had a good time watching it. Let me know if you guys have any memories of Judgment Day 2002. And I don't know if it's going to get posted tomorrow or whatever, the next one. But the next card is one I've heard people talk a lot about. SummerSlam 2002.